Okay, guys. So, um, seems like we have a good number of participants in here and, um, maybe we'll get started with some, um, introductions. So yeah. Um, I'm Lotus Lane. I am your industry relations advocate at Free Speech Coalition. Um, I thought to, you know, initiate something like this to help all of the studio performers and in-person sex work performers that are now um, figuring out the online platforms that might be new to them. It might be overwhelming. There's so many. So we're all used to navigating so many of them. That's why we gathered all of you here, our wonderful panelists and my co um hostess, Romy. Um, thank you all so much for being here. And yeah, Romy, take it away with your intro. <laughs> hey everyone, Romy Rain, uh, old hat. I've been kind of sledding about for a while now. Uh, stripping since I was 18, nude modeling. I got into camming at about 23, porn 25. So I've kind of had my toes and fingers in a lot of uh, adult entertainment facets. And I'm happy to be here chatting with you guys. I've been kind of really focusing my attention into content and creating the past two years especially. So that's kind of my bag. And I think it's kind of the future of the industry and a way that we're all able to take care of ourselves now and couldn't be more grateful for all these different avenues we have and happy to share and help in any way that I can. Nice. And we have Melrose Michaels. Hi guys, Melrose Michaels. Um, I am a brand ambassador for Fin Central, but I actually got my start in the industry around 20 years old doing primarily webcam um, before I shifted to like premium snap and premium socials. So I'm happy to be here. I hope I can bring as much value as the rest of these wonderful ladies and give you guys some good tips. Thank you and Miss Asa Akira. Hi everyone, I'm Asa. I am Pornhub's brand ambassador, but I have been in the porn industry for about 12 years and I've been in sex work for my entire adult life. I've literally never done anything else as an adult. Um, I actually happen to think that this is the best time to get into um, porn. Uh, a lot of the power is in the performer's hands now. We're able to create our own content and produce and um, you know, collect residuals and royalties, which is not something we could previously do on our content, really. Um, so I, I think this is like a really wonderful time for performers. Um, and I'm happy to help with any questions anyone might have. Great. And then we have Christopher Weston. Hey, everybody. Uh, Christopher Weston. I have been doing this for 30 years since I was 20, which makes me 50. Um, I started out as a performer in my 20s in uh, gay porn videos. Then I moved over to the director side um, and started directing my own, had my own distribution company, and then started working for the big studio systems like Falcon and Colt on the gay side uh, for about 15 years. So directed tons and tons and tons of models. And then I watched that shift in the last six years people stopped paying for studio porn um, and now the performers are in control and I kind of was out of a job so thankfully daddies are hot right now so I got back in front of the camera <laughs> and so now I'm performing again and uh, like was just said this is the best time for performers because we have control of our image uh, before the studio system uh, kind of just didn't want to show what the personality of the model was. Um, we were doing this fantasy of these big butch guys doing this stuff. But what the fans want now is they want to know your personality. And so now there are so many different, this is what they'll pay for. They won't pay for studio porn. They'll pay to follow a model and their personality. True, true. Oh, and I work for Is My Guy, sorry. <laughs> and then we have Miss Guilty Caprice. Hi guys, it's nice to be here. I'm very, very excited to be to be here and do this with you. I'm um, a model on uh, Live Jasmine for four years, and I've been turning this in a, into a total career for me. I've been working really, really hard, and I am really happy to be here and help everyone and tell everyone everything that I wanted to hear in the beginning because there is 
there are so many things that you should know when you get starting into something into this industry into gaming my my thing so many things i know and would tell you and i i'm glad to tell people you know those those things because gaming is such a complex topic and it's such a huge difference between the way it looks from the outside and what it really is there so um Definitely. Um, I mean, well, you're already talk talking about one of my first questions, so why don't you kind of touch on that, is what would you say to someone who's just coming into camming, webcamming, and what should they be cautious about or the first things they should be aware about, Caprice? The first thing that they should be aware, um, I'm working on um, a premium platform, I'm Love Jasmine, they should carefully choose their platform because there are different platforms, obviously. Uh, so you should choose the red one for you. Uh, you should be aware that there is a big difference between, you know, the way it looks, as I said, and the way it really is when you when you get started with that. Um, I think that you are going to do great if you. Uh, there are so many advices, so many things to say. Um, First thing, I think you should just really be very, very patient. It's such an important thing. Patience is, is probably the key. And um, and having a goal, like if you just want to um, camp because you've got nothing better to do and you just want to kill your time and, and that that's not going to work to make it successful. Right. Right. So for someone else, um, what were maybe the things that you first didn't know about in some of the premium platforms that you're like, wow, if I would have known about that, I could have been making a lot more money sooner or, or, you know, avoided some of the hiccups. Yeah, that's a very interesting topic because everyone thinks that camping is about getting naked and being sexual and just being on a premium platform like I am, there is so, so how much. did you first get the traffic to your pr camming profile um, when you first set it up? Were you on Twitter or how did you promote that? Uh, you started promoting yourself on Twitter, Instagram, social media, yes. Um, but they already give you a bust, like any other site, they give you a bust of traffic, of a promotion. So, um, a special so of camps like move traffic to you already. Yeah, like a special category for you as a newbie to give you a promotion, like a very special price that a lot of people will go to because it's so cheap and everyone wants to check it. this new person. Wants to check that. Yeah, even people that's got a lot to spend, they want to check that. Okay. So, um, and so that sounds good. Um, maybe Melrose um, on the Fan Central platform, what would you say are some of the things of how to navigate that? Because that's a little bit different than Cami right? Yeah, uh, it's very different than cam and I have a cam back on as well for most of my career. So I had to make a very big shift in the way I ran my business. So having like a premium Snapchat or a premium fan site, you have to really stay consistent with your content creation. Whereas alternatively coming from webcam, you just have to be online consistently and it's very time intensive. Switching and making the shift to premium social is much less time intensive um, and the rewards, it kind of has what um, I believe Rami touched on earlier. You, or you get some of those like rebills and you get this extra money um, without having to continuously be online or doing something. So it has that almost royalty feature because one clip I create and make will continue to make me money for the lifetime I have it you know, up there. Um, so being on a premium platform in terms of premium social media has really been powerful in the sense that you get to kind of go where people's attention is going. So right now everyone's attention has shifted from being on a computer to being on their phone. So the, the you know, appeal is that you get to be on their phone now. You get to be on their Snapchat, on a premium Instagram, or on a fan site. So it's kind of nice to be able to adapt since the tech side of the industry has changed so much. I think that's the biggest appeal for the premium social. And stuff is important. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Um, Romy, what do you think um, about um, maybe some of the first things people need to be cautious about when they're coming online? Uh, as, a, as a newbie? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, generally speaking, kind of like I already touched on, I have patience. Like Capri said, I think a lot of people, they kind of go on webcam and they think like immediately everybody's going to be like rapid firing tips at them. Like they're making it rain at a strip club. Not always like that, especially if you are building up your fan base and you are newer. One of my, my like best tips and tricks like for just basic camming, uh, like Capri said, also uh, there is a, a, sometimes people think that they always have to be naked and sexual and, you know, drilling themselves in free chat. I'm pretty against that personally, unless, hey, that's your, that's your deal, your bag, you really enjoy it. But personally, uh, don't give it all away too fast. Chat, talk kind of a big talker and I, <laughs> I give a cam and stripping a lot of credit for that because you have to be able to talk to yourself essentially like you need to kind of keep a conversation going even if nobody is responding to you and almost continue it and add more opinions and change it up so in some ways the more you can kind of entertain yourself without almost needing to be entertained I think is one of the best things you can do do whatever you want on cam i'm a big fan of just hanging out sometimes i call it girlfriend experience if i decide to eat on cam or if i don't wear a lot of makeup or if i'm just screwing around um i think for a new person on cam start slow don't give it all away too fast get to know like what you're comfortable with and the personality you like showing on cam because i'm sure we're going to touch on it with everybody else too because everybody has uh, different advice and different platforms they like better because uh, every platform is different and, and some work better for other people than others including campsites some people like one campsite more than others because it's just more user-friendly for them and another person is making more money on the site that they hate so I think experimentation is key when it comes to all this like even with campsites like I am cam for ambassador but I'm saying try them all out and see what you like better and take your time go slow relax and just get to talking that's that to me is i think the secret to starting cam and not hating life because it is going to be quiet in there from time to time so you gotta you gotta keep the energy up or at least be able to laugh and chat so you're someone that maybe you're not a very talkative person maybe you're used to um being on set and being used to giving being the cues being given to you and then you're stuck in a camera room and then you're like whoa I am on blast everybody's looking at me they expect me to say and do stuff what am I supposed to do there's no script um what would maybe be like an alternative to cam another online what what would you suggest for a different personality type that's maybe not the super talkative kind of person they need more direction or they maybe they do better with cuts and tape yeah. you know and breaks um, sometimes like i love a theme i'm like a sucker for a theme uh even like for a cam if you know you you want a cam and you're trying to get there and you're trying to build it up have a theme show like i'll do asmr shows where like i can't really bounce around and get crazy I have to be quiet and be close to a microphone and think of like other little things to do and be like sexual or not sexual in different ways or a fitness show. You can do cam shows where you're barely talking to your audience, which is sometimes kind of hilarious. Um, <laughs> And if you're not into that, like the uh, like the show, the show of the cam show, I would say then clip sites are likely going to be more of your bag, more like, uh, you know, the I want clips, clips for sale, uh, many vids, fan centro. Again, all of those are very different when it comes to what you're putting in and uh, the user friendliness, how much money you might make off of it. Also, a, a nice tidbit of advice for starting clips, especially if you're new there, is don't think, especially the studio stuff, you, we have long, long days, long scenes. They take hours to shoot. The, the, the fucking scene is sometimes between like 20 and 40 minutes, sometimes longer. And you don't really need that for content. Like content should honestly not be that long unless you're making a full cinematic adventure. But if it's just a scene or a JOI, five to 15 minutes are at the sweet spot. And usually any longer than that is almost like a little it's bit of a- hard to upload even if it's longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> and you can break it up too if it's a long scene and like, you know, sell it for what it should be sold for. Cause a lot of reasons people weren't making money off of content years ago from the sites that were up because it would take such a fucking huge high percentage mm -hmm. uh, and it wouldn't seem worth it. Because like if you're, you're selling a $30 scene for $5, you're not making your return. So. You almost have to think of it that way. So shorter clips and talk and stuff. Yeah. What would you say to like males, um, you know, men entering, you know, maybe there's guys that aren't even gay, but they appeal to the gay fan base, Christopher. Um, 
what would you say to those kinds of performers that are like, okay, um, I guess I'm trying to appeal to this set of, you know, guys, even though I'm not really into that, but I'm into it as far as like, you know, appealing to my fans. I often see that sometimes the straight males or whatever, I don't know how to navigate. I wouldn't even know how to give them advice about that. Sure, I see that a lot on Is My Guy as we get these new straight performers, they think because they're hot looking, they can just set a camera up and ah, every gay guy is gonna <laughs> like them. Uh, like Romy said, it's so personality driven now and don't give it a, all away right away that your fans want to know more about you. They want to see more about you. So like, I'll just put my camera up and I, I do uh, home renovations and stuff and I'll just strip down to a jock strap and paint my walls and literally people will pay me to watch paint dry. So it just, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, and, and mix it up, do something different. You want to be something unique that not everyone is doing. Everyone can just pose and look pretty but they really want to know who you are. And then you cultivate a fan base that really wants to take care of you because they know something about your life. And uh, if you're going through a hard time, you can tell them and they're like, oh, let me help you. Um, so it's not just being pretty, it's, it's having a good personality and it's interacting with your fans. And this is work. Um, so don't just think you're gonna throw up a couple pictures or a video and walk away and you're just gonna keep making money over and over and over. True. And then Asa, I have um, kind of the same question about Pornhub. Pornhub is like the main, you know, search engine that so many people use for, for porn, but it's also a way that, you know, we performers can monetize. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think maybe they have to do something studio quality to put, to make it worthy on Pornhub or, or studio length. Um, maybe you can speak a little bit about those myths or expectations that people might think they have to like live up to being on a platform as big and known as Pornhub. I think also, I mean, I've been shooting, I've been putting content on Pornhub for a few years now and nothing is studio quality. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, it literally shot on my iPhone. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think the benefit to Pornhub really is, is the fact that it's such a big platform and posting a free video on Pornhub in it, in and of itself is a promo, right? Um, they get 75 million viewers a day. Like you, it's hard to compare to those numbers, um, anywhere else, even on like Instagram. So, so the benefit of course of Pornhub is that it is like built in promo. Um, that being said, there's different ways to monetize on Pornhub. And I, I don't think people realize that. Um, one way is to upload free videos and it works just like YouTube. Um, you get paid per thousand clips. Um, it's not a ton of money. I wouldn't say that's like the biggest money maker on Pornhub, but you know, factor in the fact that it is promo and I, I think it's very beneficial. Um, also, you can sell video clips, uh, just like on Clips for Sale, or um, just sell individual videos. Right. Um, and then also there is Fan Club, which is a subscription-based uh, program where it's kind of like OnlyFans or having a website where people get rebuilt every month, um, and you just upload as much or as little as you want, and they're a part of your fan club. Um, and then, oh, and then you can also make custom videos. And obviously like every one of those platforms, even within Pornhub is so different. Personally, fan club really works for me. Oh. Um, I do the other ones, but like- Talk about fan club. I always hear people talking about model hub mostly. Well, so it's a little bit confusing, but fan club is like under the model hub umbrella. Um, but it's, it, it's cool. Um, it's, it's my biggest money maker personally out of all the platforms that I use, even outside of Pornhub. I'm Pornhub's brand ambassador, but I also use FanCentro, love it. Um, so it, it's true, like kind of what Romy said, like different platforms will work for different people. Um, it really is based on your personality. Personally, not a talker. I'm very bad at small talk. I have never cammed. Like I'm, to me, that's just like, it, it would not work for me, but I know girls in our industry who make so much money on that, um, so I, I think it really is kind of a matter of testing out every platform. Um, that being said, I kind of want to touch for one second on something you mentioned earlier, which is like, what do I wish people had warned me when I got in? Yeah. And like, I think one really important thing 
that everyone should know, especially now during Corona, that so many people who are not actually originally in sex work are looking to cam for a quick buck, um, which great for you, but people will find out. Like your best friends and your worst enemies will all eventually find out that you've done porn. And they don't care if you've only done solos or only done gay or girl girl or or done you know anal gaping like all of that is the same to to people people in the world and it's also the same to anyone any a company that might hire you in the future and like the internet is forever like you this is not going to be a secret like it's just not and if it is you're very very lucky but that's the exception not the rule um so i i i think that's really important for people to know Yeah, there does seem to be a big influx of people obviously jumping into it Mm -hmm. now. It's one of the few industries, thankfully, that can still continue and still grow and make money right now. But completely agree with you. Like, if you're getting into adult entertainment right now, make sure that you're not going to talk shit about it in two months. If it paid your rent for these times, like, at least have some level of respect for it and yourself and be prepared for people to judge you for it later because they're not going to care that you couldn't make your rent that month that you did porn. Mm-hmm. And remember, and remember, it is work. It, 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 we're putting a lot of effort into cultivating a fan base and what we do. It, you will find out quickly how much work it is. So. Mm-hmm. I think that's some of the advice I wish I had when I got started too, was to really treat it like a business. Because when I first got into camming, it was like, oh, I logged on, I made, I made great money. I logged off, I didn't work again for two weeks because I had all this money I wasn't expecting. And then in that two weeks, two weeks online, in cyber time is like two years. Yeah. So all of those fans I just had, you know, gathered and had on my social or whatever, they're gone. So to be very consistent and treat it like a business, that's when it pays you like a business. That's well, what would you say important. is like a good consistent starting schedule every day? In terms every, of cam? Yeah, every two days. Is it is it too much mm-hmm. to cam every day? I, I don't know, you know. I what what like, was a good schedule that worked for any of you? It's hard in the beginning to, I mean, in the beginning, it's really exciting. So it's easy to be on every day, on every day, on every day, but you will get burned out. So setting a schedule is important, making sure you have like actual time allotments for like the hours you're online. Like I try to be on at least three hours every time. Um, And then also taking breaks. If it's completely dead online, like don't risk your emotional well-being to sit there and try to beg for tips or tokens. Like just right. maybe log off and make a clip instead or log off and do something else that can earn you money or something. Got you. So speaking of clip making and camming and kind of juggling all of that, um, we've all kind of discussed how we use multiple platforms. Um, how do we each juggle that? How do we manage that? How do we maintain that? How do we maintain having a fan central, a Snapchat, an OnlyFans, a many vids? Like what is your method of managing that like i can say for myself i have an only fans and a just for fans and i'm about to do many vids as well um so um i've heard of this new thing called monetize i might be looking into that to try and like cross platform like post to everything all at once but for right now using just for fans and only fans i'll literally wake up in the morning do my morning post for for my fans and then post it to the other one and then hopefully i'm smart enough i had like a uh, um, a video to go with the picture post and then I'll post the video in the paid messages areas if that makes sense to people mm-hmm. so then I'll have like and and people sometimes overthink it like oh I gotta do makeup I gotta shave pussy I gotta do all this stuff like no I have like fresh pedicure so I just did a cute little outside in the grass toesy pedicure in the sun video for my foot fan so something like that um for two minutes is content You know, you don't have to beat yourself up about it being like, you know, you know, super jizz worthy, hardcore every time, you know, sometimes the simplest, like you guys have all been saying, uh, pieces of your personality is what can make, you know, enough posts for the week or whatever. Yeah, um, that's a great point. Like I've totally shot clips where they were just feet or just my ass or just my boobs. Like it, uh, you don't have to put on makeup. You can keep it surprisingly simple. And there's a lot of individual uh, fetishists out there too that who want just very specific do, 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 do parts. So yeah, ironically, if there's days you don't want to put on makeup, just shoot a part video and you might be surprised at how well that actually 
that actually sells. Uh, let's answer your question when it comes to platforms. I kind of do everything a little different. It depends. It does depend on the platform. Like if I have like a brand new exclusive scene, like uh, I'll, I'll pay my fellow performers for exclusivity for scenes sometimes. So if I have like a brand new exclusive scene that's like all mine, uh, I will probably distribute it on like one platform first. Cause then sometimes I get nervous about releasing everything on one platform at the same time. And then also you risk a little bit more piracy. So I try to like control my content a little bit more, especially if I own all the rights. Cause then you realize how how coveted that is and how yeah. <laughs> that is every that's that's all you that's your dime everything that you put into that's yours so i will honestly like if i have a big exclusive scene i might release it on like only fans first like somewhere that's a little bit more like paywall protected or sell it individually to like fans that i know will like are interested and will buy it uh especially for full price um, and then uh, maybe I'll do like a teaser clip. I'll post it somewhere like a teaser on Pornhub. I think that's a great thing to do for big scenes as well. Like post little trailers, teasers, and you can direct them to other sites and other places that you're using this content, distributing it even. So like also said, great advertisement, even if you're not using it to make money, money. Um, and then I'll usually put it on like an actual clip site, like many vids or I want clips. So sometimes that's what I do last for the my clip sites. Yeah, the okay. clip that I honestly kind of do last. So sell more individually or behind the paywall apps first, and then I'll post it publicly. I actually do something really similar to I, because I do my bread and butter is the premium snap. So I'm doing a show every night. Um, so then I'll save the premium snap and then I'll send that out as like a paid DM to unlock like a week later to my fans. And then I'll, the paid DMs to unlock is not downloadable. So they have to keep it within their message. So then like a week later after that, I'll put it, post it to my FC feed, my fan site. And a week after that, it'll become a clip because at that point, the leaking of it is not gonna compromise the value of the content. So I kind of take that approach. And then once that's on my, the website that I make the most money on, that's where I release everything. And then after that, it'll filter out to like the other clip sites, et cetera. Um, and that's just, a really good point too. Like you should expect, like for anyone that is trying to um, shoot content now and kind of stay under the radar like your stuff will get pirated like just so you know it will um, You might like even though all these people are your fans like there is always gonna be someone in Your fan list that's leaking all of your content and they might not even be doing it so maliciously um, It's just the nature of the internet. It is going to happen also worth mentioning that like it is worth reading the terms and conditions of each platform. Some of the platforms will sneaky own the rights to your content. Um, so you want to make sure that you're on platforms. If you care about this, that um, if you care about owning the sole rights to your content, it is worth looking through the terms and conditions. And they change a lot. That's the thing they too. Change a lot. They change a lot. Um, Instagram has like the same shit. Mm -hmm. So it is important to pay everywhere, not even just the premium websites. Mm -hmm. A lot of the websites we post our promo on, they technically own that promo. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could incidentally find yourself on a promotion for a site because they own your, your you've given them the rights to own that image. So that's something yeah. to make yourselves aware of if you think that maybe this is something you want to like put away after things go back to normal or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm someone who uses yeah. multiple platforms as well. So the, I think the biggest problem that you have with it as a model is how do you promote which platform your fans see on your free uh, socials? So um, and, like Twitter and Instagram and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So is so what I think you have to do is figure out what your favorite platform is, and my bread and butters is my guy. So I stagger my promotions on Twitter and Instagram. First I point to, to is my guy and then I'll point to other uh, programs. So you have to figure out where your marketing streams are because you're cultivating fan bases, not only on your fan platform, but on your Twitter and free socials. And the, even the people that aren't paying, they, they might someday pay to yeah. follow you. And if you throw up too many platforms, it confuses the fans as yeah. they need to go to. So. so true, so true. Um, does anyone use any software or anything to help them manage or organize all of their content strategy posting or anything like that? I, 
I haven't, I would love to find this. And if it exists, please let me know. Cause I'm an organizational freak. Um, yeah. I live and die by my calendar, but I just use Google calendar and I'll oh, post okay. like, this is when it gets published. This is when I promote it on social, this is whatever. And when it shows up on other platforms, so that's really worked well for me. And you put alerts on it for yourself. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very simple. Yeah. Also, it's very easy to forget what you've posted on. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. No, so that's, that's what I'm saying. You would think that, like, oh, you have to dig out some software, but it's something as simple as... I use Excel because I'm a nerd. Um, but I literally list every video I've shot, and then I have a column for all the different platforms, and I check it off as I upload. Also, really, really helpful, I think, is um, this is one thing I actually learned from Fans Intro having multiple phones really helpful mm -hmm. really really helpful to designate one old iphone like one of you know your the million iphones you've had in the past just like designating one to adult content and like maybe that one just for uploading is really really helpful um it's just like a little tip that for me has I, I have three phones now. Like it's so <laughs> it organized <helpful>. madness. <laughs> organized and also just like you know, like uploading takes a long time sometimes. So I want to use my phone while I'm yes. uploading. Also, <laughs> videos take up a lot of space, yes. um, and even uploading to Dropbox, you know, can take like two hours. Yes. So I have a light pack for Dropbox. What like after I do my because I do upload all my content to Dropbox. Really hoping it doesn't get hacked now. Um, I, overnight, like when I go to sleep, I'll put my phone to stay awake while it's plugged into the charger and it'll upload overnight while I'm sleeping the content. So mm -hmm. this way it's not, you know, I'm not on the phone. It's getting uploaded overnight. No problem. You're not impatiently waiting for it. Exactly. Got it. Um, someone asked a question, what exactly is a premium Snapchat show and how would you do that? Like, okay. How um, would you create that? So premium snapchat you have two snapchats um you have a public which you promote on your free social on instagram on twitter to just collect followers and get views and then every night on your public snap that you're promoting for free you'll make a little teaser a little sexy something and attach a swipe up link to your platform of choice where you sell your premium snap um, when they swipe up and purchase the premium snap your private snapchat a secondary snapchat username will become released to them um, they'll add you, you'll accept them. Now they're on your private snap where you'll do a full show. And a show can be anything from an explicit, like actual boy girl sex, a solo show, girl girl show, or even I get really creative because I have to do shows daily. So I'll do like an erotic story reading, I'll do foot fetish, I'll do JY, I'll do, you know, whatever to mix it up. Um, and then you just, I personally believe the premium Snapchat standard is daily shows because that's what my fans have expected when they sign up for premium snap. So knowing that expectation, that's what I've done. Um, but some models just starting out, if they don't have a lot of subscribers or users, yeah, it might be yeah. more valuable to leverage that and say like, hey, I'm new to snap. When we get my first 10 users, I'll do my first explicit show. And then uh -huh. I'll do one a week until we get 50 users, you know? So they, you can drive your fans to help drive the traffic and make you successful when you're starting. I do want to throw in when it comes to the snap and stuff, big fan of the uh, snap, but uh, technically we're not supposed to be being naked on Snapchat, like technically, I mean, as much as I love fan central, it technically they're not really supposed to be doing that. So, I mean, as much as I love them, it's important to keep in the back of your minds and point out that you need to be very careful when you're promoting your, especially when you're promoting your Snapchat. Like I, I lost my, my safer work Snapchat three times and I've never posted anything naughty on there ever. Not at all. Cause I had a premium Snapchat. Mm -hmm. So I also, I just want to throw out there too, because a lot of people kind of don't seem to know this. They think that, you know, it, it actually is allowed and it is okay and we do it, but it is all honestly, we got to keep it a little hush hush. It is a little bit of an underground industry thing because yeah. technically speaking of the platforms that we use right now, Fancentro Snapchat is kind of one of the few that you have to be very careful about because it, I'm always nervous about like Snapchat could disappear tomorrow. My premium could disappear at any time. So it's the one that I'm honestly the most nervous and precarious about. Um, so personally, I like that's why I personally don't use it as much as other platforms. And again, I like it. I've made a lot of money off of it, but I think it's important for people to keep in the back of their mind to be very careful with how they use it, how they promote it. And <laughs> technically nudity is not even allowed on Snapchat. So be careful. Yeah. And I suggest that even if you use uh, premium Snapchat to have another 
thing that you use for mm -hmm. uh, content and money just in case because I've seen so many people lose it and get really upset and you just be careful. Same with all other socials. I mean, yeah. we've, we've yeah. clamped down on almost every social except Twitter now. Yeah. Uh, and they even shadow ban. Even you. Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Twitter's shadow banning. Yeah. Uh, um, but, and, 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 and situations like that, um, a lot of people are wondering how do they drive traffic to their, their paid premiums? Like how is social media the only way to drive traffic or are there other ways um, to get people to notice their paid, you know, accounts? One of the things that I, I have just thought of, like, just as, as I'm saying this out loud is um, some girls have like, I don't know, DM groups where they like retweet each other's stuff or something like they're in a like group where they support each other and retweet each other's stuff. That's one way I've heard of, um, I guess, people with lesser following numbers getting um, more traction and more people to notice them is maybe this girl has 5,000, maybe this girl has 7,000, maybe this girl only has 200, but if they're all retweeting each other's promos and links, then you guys can help each other. So maybe linking up with some of your other fellow new girls um, that are out in the industry, you can kind of see them on Twitter. I think that's the best place to find people and kind of cultivate um, a support group, so to speak. That's one of the ways that I've heard of like new people helping each other out get their their traffic like the posts where i did one of those too but I, because i've seen other people doing it uh where it just hey post your only fans or your, your oh, those. Yeah, exactly. below and like there's just like threads of everybody just posting their stuff i think that's great we, if we can support each other that way that's fucking awesome and other stuff even uh other social media platforms if you're following the rules and not being naked like twitch and tiktok has been fucking taken mm -hmm. off like you can promote yourself everywhere and they can find you so even if you're not linking like your Pornhub page, you know, if they see Asa Akira like on TikTok or YouTube and they just Google Asa Akira real quick, they're going to find her shit like that. So, uh, I mean, I have a YouTube channel, I have a Twitch channel. So, uh, all of that that you want to jump on, especially the days that you just don't feel sexy and you don't want to put on makeup and you're depressed because it's a pandemic and it sucks out there. Uh, all those little things to keep your your minds occupied and a way to communicate with people anything social or public is going to lead them to your premiums eventually is the way that i look at it also you got to look at it as this is kind of a blessing in in disguise in a weird way because it is shutting down free um nakedness and porn and driving it to the pay sites so that fans have to follow you so if you're following the rules on social media and you can tease, just don't push it too far that you get shut down. You can drive traffic to your site. You can't put your URL, but you can talk about it, so. Yeah, yeah. The other perk too is a lot of platforms have now made it possible for the user, the fan to follow the model on the platform. So like, I know FC does that. I know a couple of platforms do that. So like where I'm at, if you someone follows me on the platform, I can now send them a paid DM. So now I can reach out, claim that traffic and kind of reel it in and try to monetize it. So you can take that approach in terms of traffic when social isn't being so friendly to you or if you get disabled or if you do lose a snap account because it does happen. Um, you, it's important to be having your eggs in multiple baskets, like make sure you also have clips, make sure you also have a fan site, make sure you've got a little bit of everything so that you're not losing something when one thing isn't working or when cam is slow or whatever it might be. And Fan Central is kind of a way to manage a premium snap, is it not? It's actually, yeah, it is definitely. That's kind of what, you know, we're known for is like the premium snap re retailer. Um, but now it's a 360 platform. You've got your Fan Central feed with the sub subscription site. You've got paid DMs. You've got um, clips. So you can do everything there as well. But again, it's going to come down to what platform fits you best. And that's just experimenting is going to get you there. And it's also worth noting, um, like, obviously, when the pandemic is over, like, sh shooting for big studios is now promo. So it might not be the biggest moneymaker anymore. But I mean, like shooting for a company like Brazzers does things for your social media and for your name that like, it's priceless. Um, so that's like also something to think about if you are thinking of taking this one step further and shooting for studios like that's I know a lot of people who their bread and butter now is producing their own stuff, but they'll shoot a scene or two every month for a major studio, pretty much just for the the promo. Name recognition. Yeah. Yeah. Names out there. 
but mm -hmm. that's a whole thing too because I shoot uh, my premiums and that's my bread and butter. You can be even more picky, so you never have to take a seat you don't want to take. You don't have to work for a company you don't want to work for. You can always just work for big companies like the browsers that will actually help your promo and name because a lot of companies like they're you know, you're helping your promo by posting on Instagram sometimes even. Mm -hmm. more seen so yeah they're be picky but your options are now better agreed so one of the ways too that we can make money online is by accepting custom video requests from from our fans um what have any of you found is the safest way to accept funds directly from fans to produce those customs like they want to pay you x amount of money and what would be your safest way of receiving that money? Like for me, I know it's not safe, um, <laughs> but <laughs> I use PayPal still. It's mine still works. It's not shut down. Um, I usually have enough conversation with my fan before I give them my PayPal. So I know like this isn't like a crazy person. This isn't trying to set me up. Like they really want something. They're really going to deliver money and I'm really going to like extract it immediately. So like as soon as the PayPal hits, it's immediately going to my bank. I don't even let it sit there for a fucking hour. Like I'm like psh, psh, gone. So that's my method. Um, and I don't, advertise publicly that I have a PayPal. So I'm not like, like my link or pin tweet isn't like mm -hmm. PayPal. Da, 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 da. Like I would never do that ever. Mm -hmm. Red alert. Like it's one of those things, like you said, with the fan centro Snapchat thing, it's not necessarily okay for sex workers to accept money this way. But if you like keep your transactions fairly civilian and, and you d you tell your fan or whoever's buying the custom from you not to put anything in the um, description line, keep the transaction friends and family, not business, then we're good. You know, like literally tell, don't even put an emoji fool. I know who you are. Like trust. <laughs> you know? Custom video is definitely the way of the future and it's saved my ass this month because. How do you accept payments for custom? And so that's why a fan platform like is my guy and is my girl we have custom video built in. So you negotiate with your followers what, what they want, what the price is, and then that just goes right into the same uh, deposit that you get every month from, or every week that you get from Is My Guy. Um, and it's been, it's, it's amazing because I can do it on my time schedule. It's not, um, uh, and I can negotiate what I'm going to do and they'll pay big money for special things. And um, yeah, I think it's definitely the way of the future, custom video. I think also the cool thing about for custom videos personally is Pornhub offers as, as well as is my guy. And I, I think the benefit of going through a platform for customs is one, obviously the payment thing. You don't have to put up your own PayPal out there. You will get paid um, in a safe way. And also it, it's kind of like what Chris just said is like, they just fill out a form and order a custom from you you will find if you do customs on your own there you for every like 50 guys you talk to or 50 people you talk to you'll sell one and that's a lot of time is email like a lot of people will pretend they want a video from you and you'll talk back and forth for a really long time and never see a penny the good thing about a platform is there is no back and forth the back and forth happens once they've already paid Right. And then you can, you're like, you look at what they want and you, you know, negotiate what you will and won't do. Um, but the money's already there. Yeah, they um, take it up front. Yeah. I use the platforms as well. I have it set up on like all of the platforms I'm on, like many vids, Pornhub, OnlyFans, like every single one has a, uh, a custom feature. So yeah, for whatever site I get, uh, they decide to submit a custom on, I get it through there. Nice. I have a question for Caprice. Do you get customs um, requests on the CAM platform like Jasmine? Yeah, <clears throat> that's what I wanted to talk about. I think I'm just lucky because Jasmine has actually an application and that's very safe to use. And so even on the web, that's good. Yeah, it's very safe to use. It's actually an application on your phone and you can do all the stuff there. You've got stories like on Instagram free and premium and you can post whatever and set up a price and people would just get that and you can post anything for anyone as well you are talking to people and trust me if you've got a lot of fans you're going to make tons of money just from messages and 
because you're just chatting with them and you're talking to them all the time, every single time, day and night, whenever they want to do that. And you're just going to get a lot of, a lot of money from that, just talking to them. And as well, you can video call, like, just like, just like a normal application, you can video call, like someone would video call you on the phone and they would pay a bigger price for that because it's your personal time and they can hear you, they can talk to you. So you can set up actually a very high price for that because they actually can video call you in bed, in the bathroom, whatever, whenever you want to do. And you can show everything. Plus you can also go live from your phone, whatever you are. So, so it's a video call feature within the uh, CAM platform? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I did not know that. That's yeah. So yeah, you do get requests and you are on uh, the messages and you're talking to people and they have tons of requests for you. You're making the videos, you're making the photos and you're sending them and you can um, ask them to tip you for that or you can um, set up a price for that so they can only unlock it if they pay for that and there so there is lots of ways to to make money and it's completely safe because it's an application that it's yeah and safe. not back and forth i got you not I back and a question forth. about customs for you guys do any of you guys edit and resell custom videos i'm if uh, they didn't pay for exclusivity i also have a, a feature on a few sites. I know it's on like many vids and clips for sale that actually has a little like checkbox or something that says if they want it to be exclusive to just them. And if they want it to be exclusive to just them, then they have to pay me more. That's okay. clever. I do actually resell my custom videos, but I do it for the same yeah. price. So is my guy has premium videos that are an upsell of your videos, but I tell my, well, I'll, I'll send it to all my fans and I'll say, Hey, one of my fans asked me to do this. I put it on my premium wall uh, and I'll sell it for the same price that he paid. Um, and I can resell the thing. So now I'm, I'm being paid to make content mm -hmm. that I can resell and nobody has a problem with that. Yeah, it works harder, not harder. I feel like the more things you can do at one time, the better. Uh, not everybody does this, uh, but I do because I'm a little ADD. But when camming, I will totally sometimes set up my phone or another little camera off to the side. And if I'm about to do like a gold show or a group show, or if I just bored and feel like it, boop, I put on like my little side camera as well. Or like you have the feature in a lot of cam sites that you can record certain shows. I will record that and I'll post it on my uh, my page like cam for like a lot of other cam sites. You can, you can post clips on your page for people to sell uh, or to buy. So uh, yeah, so the more you can do at one time, take pictures while you're on cam, <laughs> honestly. All of that. Um, so someone has a question on if you haven't cammed in a long time, like several months, how would you, how would you get yourself out of like maybe a slump or maybe you're psyching yourself out into getting back on there? Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Melrose, let us know. Uh. It's been like six months, I think, since I've gone live. Um, mm. But my approach whenever I'm getting back into it is to like promote it as if it's an, an event. So like for one day only, I'm coming back to live stream, come see me this day, promote it in advance. And then your first time back is gonna be this huge like blowout of tips and it's a lot easier than just coming back out of the blue. Um, and usually <laughs> I'll come back slow like that. Like I'll make it a big event day for one time this month and then next month I'll come on twice. The next month I'll you know, work my way slowly because it helps. So I'm not spreading my time out further and being very time intensive for little money because no one remembers me. So I think that might help with the psyching yourself out too because if you make a big event, you can't back out of your own big event. We're here to make <laughs> <an> event. <laughs> <You're committed. laughs> Instead of like, oh, I think I'll cam tomorrow. Well, when tomorrow comes, you can always cancel because you didn't announce it. But once it's a big event, it's out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very cool. Um, does anyone use AVN stars here? I'm just wondering, cause I know that one's kind of new. I mean, I've played with it a little bit, but I, it just, honestly, I have such an established fan base on other platforms. Yeah. Very similar. So, uh, I mean, I like it, but again, it, it just, it would almost be like watering down my own content right uh -huh. now in that sense. Cause I'm already on like several different sites. I don't necessarily need to use it. But I know some people are, are having success from what I hear, but yeah. it is the newer version of basically an OnlyFans. Um, but it, it depends, that's just me. 
For sure. I think, I think that that might be a good place to start for maybe someone that hasn't started yet on anywhere. That could be a good place to establish yourself because I see, like you said, some people having success there. So it might be the next new contender. Um, I heard it's so, great for fetishists. I did talk to some people at AVN and they were saying that uh, the people on AVN stars that are apparently doing really, really well uh, are, in, are in the fetish world. Ooh. That's just what I heard. Again, I can't confirm or deny, but that would actually be interesting that, to make. That's actually really good to know because um, as far as I know, Clips for Sale has been like the dominator for like fetish clips. So maybe if you feel like that's too um, oversaturated and maybe that overwhelms you as a newer performer, like I don't even want to go in there. Everybody's already sp super established. AVN stars could be the alternative for where you want to start your fetish content. Sure. Yeah. Um, so for camming, is there any like specific sites that we know of that um, say they will exclusively own your content that we know of right away to like maybe avoid? I hate to put it like yeah. that, but. <laughs> no, M4 doesn't even record your shows. Like if you do featured shows, like I've done featured shows for other companies that like if they pay to do a featured show, they record it and they can post it on their Pornhub and stuff. Again, we talk about, you know, TOS and fine print, like, you know, you have to do that when it comes to everything, you know, with stuff like camming, you know, because like anybody that's hiring you for anything or that is profiting off of you in any way probably owns something. So it's important to know like what. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I and again, some people agree to it and don't care. But uh, there are some cam sites that I do know that full on record shows and profit off of it later. Uh, cam floor I know doesn't do that because I've even asked them if they can record some of my shows and they're like, oh, we have to have somebody actually go in there and do that. And that's another reason why I'll record some of my own shows and even like post them somewhere. Uh, but thankfully, as, as far as I know, Cam4 literally cannot do that. Yeah, maybe the easier thing is to mention the platforms that don't, don't. own, yeah, there you explicitly go. <laughs> own um, your content. I know that Pornhub does not. Um, and you, like, if you shoot content, post your own content on Pornhub and you take it down, that's yours to take with you forever. It, um, it, and, and Pornhub goes as far as to, you can watermark your, uh, content so that it can never be uploaded, um, for free to Pornhub or any of the, the U-Porns, the Red Tube. I'm fucking it up, but the, the other tube sites also owned by the same company. Um, so yeah, it's, I think that is. Also, can I, can I just say one thing, um, I found really helpful because I definitely fall into slumps that where I just like don't feel creative at all and I'm not able to shoot content, especially right now. Like I'll go like a few days where I'm like, the last thing I'm gonna do right now is like get in front of a camera. Like I barely left bed. Um, but one thing for me is like, I, I have a partner who's very, very supportive and he's, you know, he's not in porn at all, but like we've kind of made this whole thing like part of our foreplay. And I think that's one way to keep it like really exciting if you have someone if you're with someone who's like into it all, like it's, it's, you can definitely, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, definitely incorporate this into your personal sex life. Um, it doesn't have to, it is a job and you should treat it like a job. The more you treat it like a job, the more successful you will be absolutely like have a schedule and all of that. But also I think, I think the benefit of this job is that it can be fun and it is it does kind of a lot of times end up as an extension of your own personal sex life. And I think that's like, the more, the more I remind myself of that, like the more motivated I am and the funner it is for me personally. Also don't, don't forget that as you've done this for a while, you are now sitting on a kind of a mountain of your own creations. And just cause you already put it up once like, a year ago or two years ago doesn't mean it's not fresh and new to your fans again or remind them of it. So when I have a slump, I'll put something from two years ago and say, oh, remember this? This was great. I, I enjoyed this so much. And you'll find you have new fans at that point who've never seen it. And so what's uh, old to you can be new and fresh. Or even longtime fans that have been like, I've never seen this before. I love this. Or they forgot and about you it. You had your dark hair or something like that. And you're like, oh God, I thought this was yeah. old you yeah. know, old, outdated mess, and they love it, you know, they love, like, out of the archives. <laughs> That's the awesome thing about Snapchat, personally, <laughs> is that because everything, all the content expires every 24 hours, 
like I, I think it's kind of like unethical to or I don't know personally I just don't like promoting things as what they're not but I'll totally be like look at this old scene or look at my home video from last week or, or whatever but that's the cool thing about Snapchat to me is that because it expires every 24 hours like you can totally reuse a scene a hundred yeah. times yeah. And I think it's a very cool thing that you can stay there like on Jasmine you just have the wall there and you're just posting everything professional or not too professional because as you said you need to show them your personality and everything about you so nothing should be super professional like everyone thinks and I think it's super cool that you can just keep everything there like I'm doing it for four years and I have some pictures that I find terrible and I just want them to be so erased from there like I don't want to see them ever again but they're like oh wow it's incredible you have that and that and I think it's I, I know that we might not like it and I was like I don't want to see that again ever because this is not me this is not who I am today but they might like to see you how you were like five years ago yeah. I think it's a cool thing to to have honestly true so we're about to wrap it up and one of the last questions is what paper would work should you get for anyone that's involved in your videos with you on your premiums um on your only fans on your jester fans on your snapchats on your videos that you're uploading to Pornhub and many vids is there a certain app or a certain website that you use to download the paperwork i know what it is but let's like tell it to the crowd <laughs> uh, i download the basic 2257s and i also have my own paperwork for my actual company that i kind of they wrote it down myself had my lawyer check it out uh just it's basically the whether i have whether it's a trade or exclusivity uh it's important you should have a paper trail it is not that hard you know to fucking have a few pieces of paper to cover your ass just like any other website would. Also make sure you take pictures of IDs. You will need them for a lot of websites. You'll need them for Pornhub. You'll need them sometimes for, uh, like, I don't wanna say other sites that I don't know for sure, but you will need them for some sites, I promise. <laughs> Even just to make sure that, you know, people you're working with are over 18. You need that paperwork to make sure there's consent. I mean, a lot of us work with our friends and all that, but you know, you don't want to like have a random scene with a random person you met twice and then two years down the line, they're like, hey, I don't want you to have that on your website. You don't take it down. I'm going to sue you. And if you don't have any paperwork or any proof, you can get sued or they can get that shit taken down. And I know a lot of us, again, we're all friends. A lot of people don't really think about paperwork so much. But in the past couple of years, that it's a huge influx of content and posting it everywhere and people making a lot of money. Uh, it's very important to make sure you get a photo of ideas, preferably bunny ears, and uh, get some paperwork, 2257s, uh, standard release or exclusivity. And if you're really like smart and onto it, I know a lot of girls who even do sign outs. They do like a quick 10 second clip. Hey, how you doing? You're here to shoot content with me. You down, happy, yay, consent. Then the end, you had a good time. Yay, happy, consent, right on. That is that is extremely important, so, yeah. Can you, can you just tell me what bunny ears was? Bunny ears. Uh, that's what we call it, like uh, shooting. Um, oh, when you put the IDs next to your face. Got it. Got it. You know, it's important. You know, for sense, a consent, and if you're, you know, if you're running a business, businesses have paperwork. You know, if you're employing people or if you're paying them, like I said, I, I pay people for exclusivity. So, like, I have to have that paper trail. Like, we pay taxes, unfortunately. So, make sure the bigger you expand, like, the more important it. That is important. I mean, some websites uh, like Pornhub, like you can't upload certain videos unless you have that proof and uh, consent in the IDs. And that's also why TOSs change a lot. Like there, there was an issue with OnlyFans too, who get really upset about things changing, but there was like issues where content was being uploaded that wasn't approved or that people didn't own. So like as, as easy as it is to get upset with like the changing of the platforms, we also need to understand why. And we also need to make sure that we're following the rules and we're covering our asses. And that's, that's my mm -hmm. first year, just, just cover your ass. True. <laughs> I tend to like take photos, like you have the photo of the ID, you have the photo of the photo release or whatever paperwork you need put it in the iPhone album and just have it there and just have an iPhone album solely for that. So it's handy because on the Central, every time I upload a clip with any other performer or even to my Kim Thunder feed, it's, it requires ID every single time of the other performer. So having it handy and in an album makes it life a little bit easier. Sorted instead of just in your mm -hmm. random photos where you have yeah. to scroll and find it. <laughs> you are very organized. I like that. <laughs> Good tips. 
Um, so someone wanted to know if we can use any clips from like their old videos from porn companies as clues, like like as a promotion on their own platform. Mm. I would say no, right? You're not supposed to. Yeah, I don't think so. I even remember thinking I hear heard of a friend losing their original Pornhub account because they did that. So be careful because just because you were in the scene does not mean you own the scene. Yeah, you usually the trailer, like post yeah, the trailer. If it's the trailer, I would think you could. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the trailer because that's like general. Yeah, but if it's in five scene. But yeah, or if it's like a clip that's from the scene that's not the trailer, probably not either. Mm, yeah, unless it's like actual BTS, but if like if you're if it's like BTS of the sex scene, but another person or the company owns that scene, yeah, then, then, after, then yeah, that probably would be a conflict. Of right, like yeah, because I'm seeing, I'm wondering if the question is like they put on their their phone while they were doing the scene, and then they have like BTS of the scene. Well, unless you got the 2257 for, you know, the performer that you're with, as well as the director who's probably walking around in the background, and then they're probably not going to give it to you because you literally got paid from that company for that. I scene. definitely know a few performers that... Not, oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe if they're like, there's well, like, put up a GoPro on a table. Yeah, they do that while they shoot their scenes. Yeah, yeah it's... Oh, it's really cool. fucked up because I've I've had that done to me and I didn't even know. So, right, yeah. I, I think like because we are like, you know, a self-governed industry, I think like the more honest we are with each other and the more we look out for each other, I think it's so, so important. Like it's, and it's just like, like be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, I like so many times, especially when like premiums and content were taken off the past few years of like, you know, people on set, like shooting your entire pretty girl set. Like they have like a video of you stripping for 10 minutes without your consent. And then they post that up on one of their, their previews mm -hmm. and websites. Like that's, that's why like there's things getting messed with and taken down into your OSs and shit changing because people are being scandalous out there. Totally. <laughs> consent, right. you guys. Um, here's kind of like, um, I would say this question maybe like for Asa and Romy specifically, because it's someone that's a performer that has a big fan base already from studio shooting, but they literally have no content banked. Um, where should they start first? Should they launch first and then post and broadcast daily or like bank some content, solo content up and then launch? I don't think... Um, well, I don't what do you do if you're in this I don't think banking content to start is a thing anymore because I think that was a thing when we had personal websites. Mm, mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that's where the money is anymore, to be honest. I still have my personal site. It makes a little bit of money every month, but I'm not shooting for it. I'm not promoting it. It's just, I'm not taking it seriously at all, <laughs> I guess. Um, but you don't need to collect content to start on a platform like Pornhub, Fancentro, uh, or to Cam, or any of that. I, I think you can start tonight, really. Right, yeah, yeah. And like you have the, you have the privilege of having that big social media following. So it, it's almost like once you've already established yourself as a, in mainstream porn, it's so much easier to make the switch to amateur. Like, it's so much, so much easier. And that's what I meant by like using the big studios as promotion. Right. Yeah, your promo's already out there, girl. Mm -hmm. Just gotta, you know, get on any any single platform and try it out from there first and then kind of go from there. Um, I would say maybe try a different platform each week as to not overwhelm yourself. Every day might be like, whoa, you know, but maybe like, see how OnlyFans is this week and go live or whatever, or see how live Jasmine is next week doing cam shows. Um, maybe in between time when you already have your makeup done, do a little solo masturbation clip or footsie clip if you're not into the masturbating clips. Um, but yeah, we're about to wrap it up here. So any last bits of advice we want to give to anybody? That's what it's all about. Romy, take it away. Um, 
Well, I completely agree with everything that's been said when it comes to the actual content creation time. Like this is the time, uh, this is the time not only to get into porn, but to get into camp, to get into creation, uh, to get online, to like cultivate yourself as an individual, as a brand, get on social media, get on all of them, enjoy it, play, have fun. Um, and yeah, get to shooting content. It's, it's kind of crazy how the industry has changed so much in the past five years. It is completely a content creator's world. Uh, I'm interested to see how this year really continues to develop by comparison. This has been probably the first year that I've been in the industry where like this is not a, a big budget studio year and it's, it's crazy and it's amazing and I'm so grateful. And to, to be honest, I've said this before, but it's important for me to say that I, I make more money doing most of my own content and shooting occasionally by comparison to when I was shooting three to six days a week. And I was my first few years. I was exhausted, I was beat up, and like it was fun and I love it, I love sex, but you can hit a wall if you're doing anything too long and without diversifying. And then you're gonna get frustrated and then if any issues happen, like we've had moratoriums before and like it's so scary and I get it, I've been there, uh, especially before you know, these premiums and content. And in the stage that we're in now, we can survive and actually thrive in this crazy way and I'm just I want everybody to get on premiums get on cam try whatever you want out see what works for you because something will work for you if you're passionate and you put in the time and the energy and it's worth it and don't let anybody tell you that your content isn't valuable because the biggest companies in porn are asking you for homemade content right now yeah. <laughs> I can do it, baby. I support you. I'm here for you. Hit me up if you need any help or advice or a retweet. I don't give a shit. I'm honest to a fault. Love you guys. I love you too, Romy. And then Miss Asa, any last bits of advice? Um, yeah, for sure. I think, um, yeah, like everything we said, I think was really valuable. I agree with Romy. Um, I'm making more in porn now than I'm shooting amateur style than I ever did in the 10 years I was shooting mainstream. Um, and of course that's not to knock mainstream porn at all. It's just my personal experience and the experience of a lot of people I know. Um, I think you'd agree. Um, I think like one thing I just want to mention, like without sounding like a totally like pretentious asshole or anything is just like, I think in a time like this, um, if we are doing anything beyond surviving, if we're making more money beyond that, I think it is important for us to give back if we can, because I think now is a really great time to show that sex workers are compassionate people. And I think if we can, you know, the whole world knows that porn is making money right now. Like that's not a secret. And we're out there promoting, we're out there, you know, still continuing to make money from the comfort of our own homes. And I think if we can show right now in this moment that we are human beings that are willing to help the world right now, the more we do that right now, I think people will remember. Um, so I think, I, I think now is kind of a time to shine in that way. Um, and also it's, you know, it, it's, I feel like a dick promoting my porn sites when like, you know, without giving anything back. Cause like the world, a lot of people are out of jobs right now. Like I think, I think if we can come from a place like that, I think this can really benefit us. Okay, take us to church, awesome. <laughs> oh my God, seriously, yes. Someone said preach, for real, preach. Miss um, Melrose Michaels. <laughs> um, well, to touch on what Asa said too, a lot of platforms are built in right now for donations as well. So like, mm -hmm. I know I've been doing it where you can, your users can donate masks. Um, all proceeds go to getting masks and we're dropping them off ourselves, some of our people on the, on the ground. But the biggest thing I feel like we didn't touch on advice wise that I wish uh, maybe we covered more, or maybe we did indirectly without saying it, but branding is so huge. Um, your brand will survive you even when you're done with adult. So establishing a strong fan base and a strong brand that can follow you into your next chapter is going to be really valuable and that starts now when you're entering into adults so like you can roll this into a youtube channel a podcast you can do so many things with your career now in today's climate that you know and 10 years ago in porn you really couldn't do that very easily so the lines are a lot more blurry yeah. now yes <laughs> Instagram like brand, walking the runway. <laughs> everything i know it's crazy so to really establish your brand and take that part of your career seriously and don't let money or influences damage it. 
or jeopardize it because your brand is going to outlast your career for sure. True. And Miss Guilty Caprice, any last thoughts or bits of advice? Yes, lots of them. Uh, as we already said, <laughs> there are lots of things to say. Uh, we already said that it's a great time to start doing this, to start coming. A great time to um, discover yourself and maybe discover that this is something that you're actually good at it and do career and um, in this. And I think it's going to be even easier for you if you've got, um, you know, lots of followers and um, you've got your lawyer friends there and it's going to be really easy for you. Um, another thing that I would love to add about what you said earlier, like what am I going to do if I'm not too talkative and my personality doesn't match to coming? The thing is what I've learned and what I would have loved for people to tell me in the beginning is that you don't have to be something specific to start doing it. The best advice that you can get is just be yourself, be natural. And trust me, your own personality is going to attract because I have a style, I am, you know, developing it, but being super glamorous, you know, might not like for everyone. So who likes me being this way might like you for being shy and not talkative and supernatural and the girl next door. So don't be at all, you know, don't be like, I'm not matching, I'm, I'm not having the right body, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not talkative, I'm not, no, that's wrong. You're going to love you because your own personality is what they want to see. So just be yourself, try to enjoy it as much as possible for real. Treat them as human beings, not not just see it as like, you know, like their wallets, like I'm going them just to drain them, their wallets and everything you're seeing is the dollar signs. Just no, just treat them like humans because it's so much more in that. And just have a goal and be super patient and I'm sure it's going to work for you. So thank you. I want to thank you to Lotus and to Rami because it's great even though I'm doing it for four years and I've learned many things and I, concentrated on it and I treat it like a job because this is what you have to do to be successful. I uh, learned a lot of things listening to you guys. So thank you too. Thank you too for what you brought to the table. And yes, Mr. Christopher Wesson, uh, <laughs> it's on home, please. Yeah, thank you ladies. I learned a lot myself. I, I get isolated in my gay bubble. Um, <laughs> gay uh, bubble? Yeah. <laughs> That's so this has been great. And I don't want to be in that bubble. <laughs> I agree with all of you. Uh, one thing I, I, I kind of wanted to point out um, is even though uh, amateur porn and everything is um, hot right now and, and it does show your authentic self, also present yourself, if I, if I knew this and I see this a lot with new people, uh, try to present yourself in your most polished way and even though everyone has you can anyone can shoot themselves put some effort into it uh, edit your videos so you're not going over and turning your camera <laughs> off, and off at the beginning make sure that there's enough light in the room that people can see you pick a corner of the room that doesn't have your dirty laundry in it um, just just put your polished self out there because those are distractions. Even when we shot studio porn, we would tell actors to take the rings and stuff because on a close-up shot, those things are just distracting. Um, and there's, there's little tips like that. Um, and don't compare yourself to other people. I'm a 50 year old man still doing porn in front of the camera. If I compare myself to a 20 year old chiseled body, I, I, I'd, <laughs> I'd be depressed. <laughs> um, so yeah, don't be yourself. Uh, don't compare yourself to others, and uh, your followers will react to that. So, but thank you for doing this. Yes, I really am so grateful for all of you for agreeing to do this, for bringing so much knowledge, and um, yeah, just, it's it's been an incredible conversation. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate my co-hostess, Romy. Um, you, Lotus. you really put this all together. Thank you so much for, you contacted me to be here, and I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for being such an incredible advocate to this industry. So round of applause for fucking Lotus, though. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>
Thank you guys. Um, the love is felt. Um, you've definitely all made my morning. So I hope we left all of our, um, you know, attendees with a lot of knowledge that they can take and use to make a lot of money for themselves too, and just thrive. So everyone have a good rest of your day or evening, wherever you are in the world. And we'll be posting the recording soon for people that may have missed it. So you can let your friends know. Bye everyone. Make a lot of money. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bye. Thank you. Bye.